بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وكبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله يتكاكم إن الله عليم خبير صدق الله العظيم وشتو يا دولازي من حرواتسكي نينوية شانتس أوروبسكي أوني دزولت شتا دانا دغوري من حرواتسكم يزكو ودا بروضي موي دبوتلي تاينيك Magister Nermine Fenja Botovic. Uh, since I'm coming from the Croatia, the latest uh, EU member state, uh, I have felt free to speak today in uh, Croatian language and uh, my uh, secretary will uh, translate into English. Uvaženi prisutni, cijenjeni organizatori ovoga skupa, poštovani predavači, dozvolite da vas pozdravim i poselamim i izrazim svoje poštovanje organizatori i učesnici ovog hvale vrijednog skupa koji se održava ovdje u Rimu, za kojeg slobodno možemo kazati da je grad multikulture, suživota, međurelijskog dijaloga. Kao predstavnik Mešihata Islamske zajednice u Hrvatskoj, kao čovjek odgojen i odrasta u pluralnom, multikulturalnom, multinacionalnom ambijentu, podržavam vaše aktivnosti jer su one u funkciji dobrobiti čovjeka i kao takvi u punom suglasu sa osnovnim postulatima vjere islama. Dear participants, Honored members of the organization team, respected lecturers, please allow me to express my esteem to the organization board as well as to the participants of this valuable event that takes place here in Rome, the city we can undoubtedly mark as the city of cultural diversity, coexistence and interfaith dialogue. I am speaking here today not only as the representative of the Islamic community in Croatia, but also as the person that was born, grown up and educated in a multicultural and multinational ambience. Therefore, I strongly support your activities since they are for the well-being of the mankind and as such in complete harmony with the postulates of Islam. Punu potporu za suradnju i komunikaciju sa drugim i drugačijim nalazim u vjeri islam kao pretpostavku međusobnog upoznavanja i razumijevanja te razmjeni dobara među ljudima i narodima. Pluralizam je prirodan tog stvari i životna potreba na osnovu koje se ljudi sami po sebi različiti u jeziku, rasi, kulturi, vjeri, životnim navikama, što je u stvari kozmička zakonitost, pa je razlikovanje među ljudima u mišljenju i vjeri, objektivna realnost, to konstatira i uzvišeni stvoritelj kada kaže svima vama smo zakon i pravac propisali, a da je Bog htio, on bi vas sjedbenicima jedne vjere učinio, ali on hoće da vas iskuša u onome što vam propisuje, zato se natječite tko će više dobra učiniti, a Bogu ćete se svi vratiti, pa će vas on o onome u čemu ste se razilazi doba vijest. Islam itself encourages Muslims for the cooperation and dialogue with all people regardless of their religious or any other origin. Since cooperation and dialogue are recognized as the basis for learning about others and development of mutual understanding in order to exchange goods between people. Pluralism as such is natural and also a lifelong necessity since people are differentiated by language, race, culture, faith, habits. This makes pluralism in fact universal postulate and therefore makes differences among people regarding their opinions and religion objective reality. This has been mentioned in the words of Allah who said, To each of you we prescribe the law and the method. Had Allah willed, he would have made you one nation, united in religion, but he intended to test you in what he has given you, so raise to all that is good. So Allah is your return uh, all together and he will then inform you concerning that over which you used to defer. Pored pluralizma koji Kur'an eksplicitno nalaže, on ujedno pledira na zajedničku porijeklu čovjeka jednakost u ljudskim pravima i vjernostima. O ljudi, bojite se gospodara svoga koji vas od jednog čovjeka stvara, od njeg je i drugu njegovu stvorio i od njih dvoje mnoge muškarce i žene rasijao. Besides pluralism, which is explicitly mentioned, in Quranic verses we find that mankind has common origin and also strong uphold of the human rights and human values protection for everyone. People, fear your Lord, who created you from one soul and created from it its mate and dispersed from both of them many men and women. Najoštrije se osuđuje rasizam, nacional šovinizam i isticanje kao prednosti bilo kakvih razlika među, o, o, među ljudima osim po bogobojaznosti i dobročinstvu. 
Tako vjerovjesnik Muhammed Ali Selam kaže, o ljudi vaš Bog je jedan, a zajednička vam je predak, nema prednosti adnap nad narapom, niti narap nad narapom, nema nikakve prednosti crvenokožac nad crncem, niti crnac nad crvenokožcem, osim po bogobojadnosti i dobrom djelu. In Kur'an we can also find strong condemnation of the racism, national chauvinism, emphasizing any differences but those based on sanctity and charity. The messenger Muhammad a.s. said, People, your God is one and only, and also your predecessor is common. Neither Arab has the advantage over those who are not Arabians, nor non-Arabian have the advantage over Arab. Also, neither has the black people advantage over redskin people, nor do redskin people have the advantage over black people except in sanctity and charity. Prema tome, kako čovjek ne živi kao izolirani pojedinac, pogotovo u suvremenom društvu, onda upućenost jednih na druge sa svim razlikama koje nas krase i koje kao takve ostaju pri nama, biti će od opće koristi za napredak pojedinca i društva i u funkciji smanjenja antagonizama među ljudima. Tako pažljivo čita, tko pažljivo čita sve te tekstove svih nebeskih objava, primijetit će da su krcati različitim videovima komunikacije i dijaloga svih vjerovjesnika sa svojim sjedbenicima i drugim narodima. Since a person does not live as an isolated individual, especially in modern society, then correlations between people with all peculiarities present will become of great benefit for the individuals as well for societies in decreasing antagonism between people. Dakle, uzajamna suradnja i miroljubiv suživot između sljedbenika knjige i drugih nikako ne znači dijalog o nekim doktrinarnim pitanjima o kojima se oni razilaze ili od stupanja od principijelnih pitanja vjerovanja radi prividnog mira ili koncenzusa, nego o onome što je od koristi za čovjeka, zaštiti njegovog prava i očuvanju dostojanstva čovjeka, zatim eliminacije nasilja, terora, suzbijanja neprijateljstava, rješavanja problema ljudi, osiguranja života dostojnog čovjeku, što su sve zajednički postulati nebeskih objava, a koji su prihvaćeni i primijenjeni u pozitivnom zakonodavstvu i u skladu su sa općim proglasima i poveljama univerzalnim pravima čovjeka. So cooperation and peaceful coexistence between the followers of the book and all the others does not mean dialogue about doctrinal questions on which they cannot find consensus or deflection from the principles of faith for the artificial peace and consensus. Rather, it means dialogue about what is beneficial for the person, like protection of his rights, preservation of human dignity, elimination of violence, elimination of terror, suppression of hostilities, solving the problems that people face with, and creating an environment for the life every person deserves. All these mentioned above are the postulates of the heaven revelations which are accepted and incorporated in positive leg- legislation and also in accordance with the human rights declarations. Dialog među religijama svojevremeno se odvijao isključivo na planu racionalno metafizičkog. On se kroz vrijeme premjestio i na egzistencijalno kulturološki plan. Drugim riječima, pored metafizičkih i doktrinarnih razloga, zahtjev za među religijskim dialogom počinje dobivati svoje ozbiljno kulturološko i civilizacijsko opravdanje. U posljednjih nekoliko desetljeća zapad, svačen kao samo svojna metafizička i religiozna činjenica, proživljava veoma ozbiljne i krupne promjene. Moderni čovjek počinje se suočavati s radikalno novom situacijom, čije temeljne karakteristike ne može poreći danas niti jedan razuman čovjek koji se bavi fenomenom religioznosti. Before, the interfaith dialogue has been limited on the discussions about rational metaphysics matters. Through time, it evolved on discussions about ex- existential cultural matters. In other words, besides metaphysical and doctrinal reasons, demand for the interfaith dialogue starts to achieve its serious cultural and civilization justification. In the last few decades, the West, recognized as metaphysical and religious fact, passes through serious changes. Modern human is facing with the situations which are radically different from the previous ones and which cannot be denied by anyone who is seriously dealing with the religious phenomenon. Danas u zapadno europskim zemljama živi na desetine milijuna muslimana, dok u arapsko-islamskim zemljama boravi ogroman broj kršćana raznikoli, raznih, raznolikih denominacija. Stoga, bez sustezanja možemo kazati da je putovanje iz jednog religioznog univerzuma u drugi jedno novo iskustvo s kojim se suočava čovjek, 
Today, in West European countries live several millions of Muslims, and meanwhile, in Arabian Islamic countries lives huge number of Christians of different denominations. Without any inhibition, we can say that the journey from one religious universe to another is a new experience that modern human faces with today. To nije iskustvo kako to lijepo primjećuje Sejd Hussein Nasr, otkrivanje novih kontinenata ili čak planeta, nego iskustvo otkrivanja brojnih novih religijskih duhovnih univerzuma ili svjetova. Suvremeni čovjek je danas suočen s nekoliko stvarnosti ili fenomena religijskog karaktera koji pripadaju raznolikim duhovnim i religijskim tradicijama, čiju je religijsku i duhovnu narav nemoguće osporavati izuzev ako se osporava postojanje religijskog fenomena uopće. As it has been noticed by Sayyid Hussein Nasser, that is not a journey on which someone discovers new continents or even planets, but it is a journey on which someone discovers many religious worlds or even universes. Today, modern human is confronted with several realities or phenomena of religious characters that belong to diverse spiritual and religious traditions, which religious and spiritual nature is not possible to deny, except if it is denied the existence of religious phenomena in general. Kulturološke i civilizacijske promjene u modernom svijetu uvjetovat će i ozbiljne promjene unutar teologije religija. Muslimani recimo s teološkom obnovom Abduhua, Ben Badisa i drugih, kršćani s drugim Vatikanskom koncilom i liberalnom teologijom, iako je Abduhuova obnova bila uzrokovana vjerskim pro, uh, programskim revandikcijama zapadnog kolonializma, on će u osnovi uspostaviti pozitivan stav spram drugih religija. Takav pomak je primjetan i temeljnim dokumentom drugog Vatikanskog koncila u kojim se jasno uočava prijelaz od teologije istine na teologiju čovjeka različitih uvjerenja u dokumentu Nostra etata, čime, se omogu, čime će omogućiti najširu moguću komunikaciju unutar svijeta ekumene, što i jest njegov najveći doprinos. The changes in modern world, cultural and civilization ones, will condition the changes within theology and religions. For example, we can mention the theological reform of Abduhu and also the Second Council and the liberal theology that affected Muslims and Christians respectively. Even though Abduhu's reform was caused by the religious program of vindication of Western colonialism, in its essence, reform will establish the positive attitude towards other religions. Such improvement is evident in the documents derived from the Second Vatican Council, mainly through transition from theology of truth to theology of the human with different beliefs, Nastra etat, what will allow the broadest possible communication within ecumenical world and what is perceived as Council's biggest contribution to development of dialogue. Refleksi spomenutih pojava osjetili su se i na našim prostorima početkom 70-ih, na našim prostorima se počinje razvijati ekumenska teologija, što je ranije bilo nezamislivo. Pojavljuje se plajada izvanrednih teologa izuzetno širokog duha i teološke kulture. Svojim učenjem oni postupno otklanjaju predrasude praveći snažan zaokret k potpunijem susjetu muslimana i kršana. Od tada riječ i dijalog počinje označavati ne samo govorenje, nego i slušanje drugoga, priznavanje i razumijevanje drugoga u njegovim specifičnostima odnosno njegovoj vlastitoj tradiciji. The consequences of this phenomenon reflected also on our region. In the beginning of 1970s, the so-called ecumenical theology will start to develop dialogue in a way that was not in- imaginable before. These processes have led number of exceptional theologians who had broad understanding for peculiarities, and so to say, theological culture. Their teachings contributed to the removal of prejudices, what created major U-turn towards better understanding and contacts between Muslims and Christians. The dialogue became become to mean not only speaking to, but also listening to the others, what created space for appreciation of others and understanding of their peculiarities and tradition. Rezultat takvog stava bit, bit će činjenica da će se na Teološkom fakultetu u Sarajevu i Zagrebu islam, odnosno kršćanstvo, početi izučavati ne više u sklopu povijesti religija, nego u okviru zasebnih seminara ili kolegija. Iako su to bili pionirski pokušaj, oni su izvršili snažan utjecaj na ideju ekumenizma i dijaloga na ovim prostorima. The result of such approach is that the faculties of theology in Zagreb and Sarajevo will start to teach about Islam and Christianity through independent seminars and not within history of religions what was the case before. Even though these were pioneer attempts, 
they have massively impacted the idea of ecumenism and dialogue in this area, Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Nakon sagledavanja potreba i mogućnosti međureligijskog dijaloga, vidljivo je da dijalog ima temeljnu ulogu u izgradnji stabilnog i naprednog društva i zajednice. Izgradnja građanskog društva u kakvom mi živimo i većina čovječanstva uvjetovana je dobrom, međuljud, dobrim međuljudskim i sveopćim dijalogom. Taj dijalog mora imati četiri vrijednostna načela. After we have reconsidered the necessity and potential of interfaith dialogue, we saw that dialogue had major role in development of stable and progressive community as well as society in general. The development of the model of soci civil society that we and majority of mankind lives in is conditioned by a good interfaith dialogue and it has to be based on four principles. Prvo, postati čovjekom i biti čovjek i poštivati dostojanstvo svake osobe bez obzira na vjersku pripadnost. Dakle, biti čovjek nadasve. The first one is to become human and be human and to respect the dignity of every human being regardless of its religious determination. So it means human being above all. Drugo, slobodan, ravnopravan i iskren dijalog, diktature i diktatore, duh vremena ne trpi i ne prepoznaje. The second one is dialogue that will be free, sincere and based on equality. Diktators are not tolerated and recognized by spirit of time. Treće, pravo na različitost, poštivati i prihvaćati različnost kod sugovornika bez umanjivanja i omalovažavanja startnih pozicija. The right to diversity, to respect and accept differences of the participants in dialogue without decrement or putting down the starting positions in dialogue. Četvrto, suživot usprkos naših razlika. U fikskoj pravnoj znanosti doskora smo imali podjelu svijeta na darul islam ili kuća mira ili spasa i darul harb, kuća nemira i nesigurnosti. Uglavnom, darul islam se odnosio na područja gdje su živjeli muslimani i da je to prostor u kojem je muslimanima zagarantiran cjeloviti vjerski život. Ne muslimani ili zimije su sigurni jer i štiti islamski šedjarski zakon. Prostor Dalu Harb je prostor gdje muslimanima nije omogućeno ispovjedanje vjere u potpunosti. Poradi toga se oni na tom prostoru osjećaju nesigurno. Coexistence despite our peculiarities and diversities. Until recently we have had within fiqh schools, Sharia Islamic law schools, the division of the world on Darul Islam, the house of peace, and Darul Harb, the house of insecurity. Mainly Darul, Darul Islam referred to the area where Muslims lived and where they were guaranteed to fulfill their religious life. Non-Muslims, the me, are safe since Islamic Sharia law provides them with protection. The space of so-called Darul Harb is the one where Muslims are not allowed to live in accordance with their religious rules and because of that they feel insecurity. Danas sve češće u literaturi kao javnom govoru susrećemo pojam Darul Ahd ili Darul Sulh, kuća dogovora. Taj pojam i taj termin je najprimjereniji danas u komunikaciji. Naša društvena zajednica, mislim na Republiku Hrvatsku, može se nazvati Darul Ahd. Država je pored Katoličke crkve potpisala još 12 14 ugovora sa vjerskim zajednicama, a dvije su u pripremi. Tim ugovorima su se sriješila mnoga pitanja od zajedničkog interesa za državu, ali i za zajednice. Među njima je islamska zajednica koja je potpisala ugovor 2002. godine. Ovakvi i slični ugovori preveniraju možebitne sukobe, izjednačavaju sve vjerske zajednice pred zakonom, potiču na zajedništvo i vjernost, te obvezuju i udružuju vjerske zajednice na zgradnji boljeg i funkcionalnijeg dijaloškog ozračja. Istovremeno vjerske zajednice su partneri države u promicanju svih univerzalnih vrijednosti društva. To radi na sebi svojstven način kroz različite programe. To je najbolji put ka miru i stabilnosti u društvu. Today in literature we can find mostly the term Darul Ah, what means the house of agreement. We find this term as the most suitable in today's communication. Our society, and I mean here on Croatia, can be called Darul Ahd. Besides Catholic Church, the government has already signed agreements with 14 other religious communities in Croatia, and it is expected two more religious communities to sign such agreement. Those agreements have answered many questions of mutual interest, religious communities once, and governments also. Among, among those religious communities that have signed agreement with government is the Islamic community in Croatia, and that happened on the 22nd of December in 2002. 
Such agreements uh, and those similar to them prevent potential confrontations. They level up all the religious communities before the law, foster unity and loyalty, and oblige religious communities to associate in order to help in developing better and more functional dialogue environment. At the same time, religious communities are the partners to the government in promotion of the universal values within society, and this is achieved through different programs. We find this as the best way towards peace and stability within society. Svakodnevno smo svjedoci da ima i onih koji se oponiraju među religijskom dijalogu. Kod muslimana se promiješa da je intencija kršćanskog dijaloga određeni vid evangelizacije, a kod kršćana je mišljenje da je intencija muslimanskog dijaloga određeni vid islamizacije. Treba jasno kazati da nije cilj dijaloga niti evangelizacija, niti islamizacija. U našem vremenu prepoznajemo njegovu dvostruku ulogu. We can witness that also there are those who are opponing development of interfaith dialogue. The part of Muslim and Christian community perceive interfaith dialogue as the attempt to conduct Islamization or evangelization respectively. But it has to be said clearly that neither the aim of the interfaith dialogue is evangelization nor it is Islamization and that we today recognize its double role. Prvo, međureligijski dijalog je prije svega komunikacija, kultura, naroda i tradicije. Primarily, interfaith dialog is a way of communication between members of different cultures, nations and traditions. Drugo, međureligijski dijalog je jedini ispravan način međusobnog upoznavanja i razvijanja predrasuda jednih od drugima. Međusobno nepoznavanje izaziva fobiju, fobija izaziva prezir i mržnju, a mržnja dovodi do kaotičnog stanja. Međureligijski dijalog za muslimane ne predstavlja nikakav bauk. Sve što musliman treba da uradi jeste da baštini Kur'an u punom smislu te riječi. Sve ostalo je područje Božje volje i ravnateljice, zato poruka je jasna ka međureligijskom dijalogu bez straha. The second one is that interfaith dialog is the only right way to meet other people and eliminate prejudices that exist about others. Mutual ignorance creates phobia. Phobia creates contempt and hatred, and hatred creates the state of chaos. For Muslims, interfaith dialogue is not unfamiliar. If everything what Muslim has to do is to follow Quranic principles completely. All the other is the part of God's will that manages everything. Based on that, the message is clear. We have to go towards interfaith dialogue fearless. Svjetli primjeri zajedničkih djelovanja Svjetske islamske lige Rabite i Vatikana 1994. godine u Kairu na konferenciji o stanovništvu, zatim 1995. godine u Pekingu na konferenciji o ženi, jasno govore da je zajednički cilj suprostaviti se svakoj anarhiji i sačuvati dostojanstvo ljudskog roda. We have great examples in joint activities that had World Islamic League, Rabita and Vatican, when they had organized conference on population 1994 in Cairo. And after that they organized conference about the position of women in 1995 in Beijing. These two examples have shown that our mutual goal is to fight any kind of anarchy and to preserve the dignity of mankind. Takvih primjera imamo u Republici Hrvatskoj gdje se sve vjerske zajednice oglašavaju bitnim pitanjima. Nekada to čine u vidu zajedničkih izjava, nekada u vidu zajedničkih apela, nekada u vidu zajedničkih deklaracija. Vrijedno je naglasiti da su vjerske zajednice u Republici Hrvatskoj organizirane u svjetsku organizaciju religija za mir u čijem radu aktivno sudjeluje i islamska zajednica u Republici Hrvatskoj. Such examples we also have in Croatia when religious communities gave their thoughts about certain phenomenon that has occurred within society. Sometimes they do it in a way that they give joint statement, sometimes there are joint appeals and sometimes they give joint declaration on certain topic. It is important to mention that religious communities in Croatia are organized in World Conference Religions for Peace, which part is also the Islamic community in Croatia. I zaključak, međureligijski dijalog je za muslimane ne samo poželjan, već nužan proces. Promican u duhu islama, on nije islamizacija, već prezentacija islama. Dijalog kao takav podrazumijeva princip općeg dobra, a ne etno dobra. On ima i svoja pravila. And uh, some final remarks. Interfaith dialogue for Muslims is not the process that is only desired but also the necessary one. If it is conducted in accordance with the principles of Islam, it does not mean Islamization.